With Andor on the horizon, I wanted to talk about one of the things I am most excited to see in the new series, the Imperial Senate. We've been hearing about it since 1977, but outside of one falsified news image from Star Wars Rebels, this will be the first time we actually see it on screen in action. Its existence was largely symbolic. By the end of the Clone Wars, Palpatine had all his emergency powers, and he had taken direct control of institutions like the Banking Clan. He kept the Imperial Senate around to give galactic citizens the appearance of the government functioning as normal, but in reality the Emperor just did what he wanted, when he wanted, and there was little the Senate could do to stop him. But that didn't mean Senators were completely powerless. In fact, we know that the Emperor and other high-ranking Imperials were afraid of the Senate's influence on the galaxy. When Darth Vader captures Leia at the start of A New Hope, Imperial Officer Dane Jeer says that holding her, a member of the Imperial Senate, is dangerous because other Senators might use her arrest to generate sympathy for the rebellion. We've seen a similar discussion more recently in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series as well, still centered around Leia's capture, weirdly enough, but when Reva kidnaps young Leia to use as bait to lure out Kenobi, the Grand Inquisitor chides her for taking the daughter of a senator. Votes in the Imperial Senate were basically pointless, just put on for show, but a senator's true power was their status as public figures and their ability to inspire hope in the people they represented if they chose to. Many senators were happy to enjoy the comforts that came with their station. Ornfree Ta, for example, was known to live luxuriously on Coruscant while his people on Ryloth suffered. But senators like Mon Mothma and Bail Organa weren't so complacent. By the time of Andor, rebel cells and acts of resistance were popping up all across the galaxy, but the rebellion with a capital R had yet to be formed. Eventually, Mon Mothma will make a public speech against Emperor Palpatine, she will be accused of treason and sent on the run to survive, but she will gather more and more independent cells to her cause to form the Rebel Alliance. I don't know how much of that we'll see in Andor, and it won't happen in Season 1, but you can watch it now in the Star Wars Rebels episode, Secret Cargo. But I look forward to seeing Mon Mothma's role in the Imperial Senate before all that. The Empire's big worry in A New Hope was that Leia's capture would drive more people to support the Rebel Alliance, an organization they knew she and her parents were part of, but couldn't do much about without creating public uproar. I want to see that kind of thing from Mon Mothma's perspective. That'll make it all so much more real. How did she create an alliance under the Empire's nose? Were they aware of it, or did they just vaguely know she was up to something? What did they do to try to discredit or silence her discreetly? All this political intrigue sounds awesome. But really what I'm trying to say is that for decades, we have known that the Empire felt keeping the Imperial Senate around was necessary to maintain control of the galaxy until the creation of the Death Star. With that weapon, they felt the rest of the galaxy would be too afraid to stand against them. So we know the Empire saw power in the Senate, a power that they themselves feared. But it's always been vague and we've never seen much in the way of specifics. But Andor might change that, and I think watching A New Hope again after finally seeing the Imperial Senate on screen is going to be very interesting, especially that scene with Tarkin and the other officers sitting around the conference table. Their discussions of the Imperial Senate will no longer be abstract, they will be concrete to us, and I can't wait. But we're still a couple weeks out from Andor's premiere, so I guess I have to. Until then, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for all our Andor coverage, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.